Hello and welcome back to the Ascension Diaries channel. This is a space weather update video because it is July 18th, 2023. And last night was one of the most active space weather episodes that I've seen in quite some time. As you can see on the screen, this is the Soho Lasco 2 footage from July 14th into July 18th. The data has properly loaded. And so we're just going to observe. As you can see, there's been many... Uh, coronal mass ejections, which is those visible explosion you're seeing. There was also a major sun diving object, but we had two solar proton storms. And I'm going to point out to you quickly on this particular video how to interpret those when you're just watching. So let's start with the 14th here. Here on the upper left side, we saw a large CME, then faster ones here on the 15th, the date here on the bottom. And these are on the side usually more away from Earth. That was the biggest one on the 16th, calling, causing the first solar proton storm. Then all the data kind of shut down. I was complaining about it yesterday before things even popped off crazier, which you're about to witness as the 17th. There it is. So the 17th had the largest coronal mass ejection I've seen in a while, but the way you know it is a solar proton storm just by looking at this footage is by watching how sparkly it gets. I know that's maybe not the most scientific term, but those are the protons that you're seeing flying out of the sun and disrupting the imagery basically and being picked up. So they're a little more rare, but when it does happen, you see all the sparkles so all of those sparkles basically signified that solar proton storm or solar radiation storm S2 that happened the 17th into the 18th UTC of July this year. And for solar cycle 25, we are basically moving into what the public science side is saying to be the peak of the solar cycle. So we're right in it. And so we may see more of these solar proton storms, but they are very pretty, but they definitely have an effect on our motions here on Earth. Although the sun being in Cancer and the new moon being in Cancer during this exact same time also was a factor. So if you have any cancers in your life, especially children, and they were having a hard time composing themselves yesterday, it'll be all right because the moon just moved into Leo and that should calm them down, be a little bit more focused and centered in themselves and in their confidence. So we're going to look next at the sun diving object I mentioned earlier, and then we're going to get into even more of the data because it's interesting that the Schumann resonances in Italy and Russia basically have not responded to all of this impact. Even though we had Aurora right away, we had, like I said, everybody was feeling it right away, which it should. You know, the sunlight only takes eight minutes to get here. And if it's shooting out of the sun with extreme levels of force, it's probably getting here even a little faster, all of this matter. And quantumly, it's all happening. It's all happening at once also. So we can get into that or not. That's up to you, but that's kind of the, the logic I go along. And if you would like to learn more about the space weather, you can join my Patreon because because we're going to be doing a class on August 18th specifically about space weather. And if you're a guardian of your home, of your children, of your whole city, of your YouTube channel, whatever it is, I want you to be more confident in reporting this and sharing this to your audiences. As a healthcare practitioner, a mother, father, whatever it is, if you're here to protect or serve another being and be a healer, you need to know about this. This is directly impacting you, your clients, our reality, and it is, in my opinion, extremely ignorant not to include this into your your diagnosis or your diagnostics about your clients and about your the people you're healing, the people in your care. So I'm happy to help. It is my pleasure, and I can't wait to see you on August 18th for that Zoom call. And if you have any questions, of course, reach out to me on any social media. You can email me at ascensiondiaries.com. And you should read the description for those links as well because I 
do that due diligence. So here's the object here on the right hand side. I don't know if you saw it. We're going to go for one more round of this footage so you can look. But the object goes in this way on the 16th, the date here on the bottom. And then we have that massive explosion. We actually had a few, have a few after that object. And right around when that object was flying in was when I was struggling to get the footage to load yesterday. So I think maybe they were having decisions being like, do we show this? Do we edit this out? Is it helpful? It is helpful. And we certainly want to see it. There it goes. All right. So there was also in the news yesterday, a, a large object basically flew past earth and it came from the direction of the sun so they say it was more difficult to see from the earth because of the sun basically backlighting it and making it difficult to witness then there was discussion about the technology that's about to be launched to be able to properly watch and watch for these objects more and i just want to personally assure you i am very sure that we have this already dealt with um, technologically on earth's earth level on the higher levels and so on like there is a lot of people who genuinely used their intelligence to protect and serve our planet from many hundreds of years ago actually and have continued to do so also in our telegram group chat there was discussions about us in the astral plane also visiting buildings protecting buildings and the forbes article specifically mentioned that it was a hotel sized object which was very interesting and specific and honestly there is also a comet that flew past called the Atlas Comet recently that I mentioned in my last video. So there is a few objects kind of in the vicinity that were already being reported. But this explosion unfortunately didn't happen right after that object impacted. So we can't be like, oh, that was the, the, the culprit there. But <laughs> the backside of the sun or just on the backside of the sun was very, very active. This was the footage, that first explosion was one I was enjoying yesterday, then another one basically the same size, and then of course here we got our epic one on the 18th, so just really impressed, really enjoying that footage, the solar proton footage, and we can get a uh, zoomed out view, which is actually, interestingly enough, the footage is being sped up until that explosion this was happening to this data yesterday it was going really fast but then for some reason it's slowing back down so this solar s2 storm this particular coronal mass ejection which coincided with an m5 solar flare which i will show you the proof of if i can grab the right link right away here it is so they call this an extended or a long duration solar flare. And this happened just as the 18th began on the UTC, dates here on the bottom. And the, ex the long duration, as you can see, it's a little bit more of a hump instead of these, these more shallow spikes. Um, this last M-class flare that we had on the in between the 16th and the 17th here. This was more the last impressive explosion that we had and I was very impressed with and then a much bigger, more impressive one happened the next day, which I'm here to report to you. This long duration experience would have kept our x-ray radiation levels to an M class from the sun during that time, which you can see has actually been over um, one to about one and a half hours in a way was this intensity and so on the footage unfortunately it is kind of downplayed but we get bits and pieces and those who are professionals and the heliophysicists i'm watching on twitter which i'm going to show you more of that footage because uh, this is impressive but i have even better imagery i don't even know where some of these people are getting it but i'm i'm grabbing it from them anyways i'm screen recording it and putting it on my instagram because it's beautiful and i love it but in this footage i wish i could Ooh, they, I think they speed it up because they don't want you to see that, that flying object, but you can see it really slowly. If you watch really closely, it goes, oh, it's so hard to see it. I'm going to try and track it with my mouse so you can look. It goes right through here and right about now. Did you see it? Did you see it? So eh, the duration between that thing going into the sun and that explosion 
is honestly not too far apart. So it's not without, it's not outside of the realm of possibility in my opinion, but it's not like I need to tell you any specific thing is happening or claim anything about it. And I'm not trying to get you all uppity and excited because the scientists don't want you to get that way either. There's a reason why they're editing and manipulating this footage because the emotional energy of humans on earth is the most volatile and potent thing in my opinion and why I think why so much stuff is being edited out or tweaked a little bit it is to help with managing the emotions of the humans and I'm not here to stir up your emotions either I'm coming to you out of joy out of compassion out of of companionship and personal interest about this fascination as a practitioner, a psychic medium, a healer. I am passionate about serving and protecting our humanity. I have a psychology background and this certainly affects your psychology through brainwave entrainment, through basically this being the largest electromagnetic body in our environment and that entrains our bodies because we are smaller ele- than this electromagnetic body. And it also entrains the earth, causes volcano activity, which we have been seeing, uh, earthquake activity. And again, if you have kids, <laughs> it causes the same things to be exploding inside of those little guys. And I had a few complaints yesterday and lots of women were texting me and messaging me. That's another sign. When the women gather and the women start coming to me to share about their experiences, to give me more data, to just be in my energy and be with me as my friend, I know that big shifts are happening for us on the planetary level. And we're just, we're doing what we need to ground and find our bearings to continue being the guardians. And so... Let's get into more of the footage and the more of the reporting. I just want to, I want to look at that comment again and all these sparkles like that is what makes a solar proton storm. Those are, those are protons apparently shooting out. So let's move into, I'm just going to show you about that, that hotel sized asteroid. It says was undetected. The Forbes article was the biggest one and it did a close pass to earth so i'm just going to show you this article really quick to show you it's real and that there is a they were also talking about a different meteoroid that did impact in russia in 2013 was something they wanted to make a note of so just listen to the other data that they disclose while they use this main talking point so they're using this talking point to get you to click and then they add in all this information in the, from the past to sort of build the argument but it's funny too because they really they really go on about this and how how large it was and how it was sort of in the blind spot but i assume that it was probably deemed as a non-threat or not a big enough threat to respond to and who knows what it maybe it wasn't even a maybe it wasn't even a space object at all like a natural rock and it could have been something else of course but it's tr- they're trying to build the argument that we are sort of in danger there's also a meteor crater over by flagstaff arizona that is famous and they bring it up in this article as well but there is a mission planned to put out a surveyor and from nasa and the european space agency I believe I also saw something about the Chinese space agency somewhere, but we don't need to get into it within even five years from now, which is, of course, ridiculous, (laughs) a ridiculous amount of time. And like, let's not wait. You know, if there's this type of threat, why wait? You know, so clearly, in my opinion, it's a little bit of it's just lip service, in my opinion. Yes, a there was also another one impacting New York City and yeah here's the famed meteor crater in Arizona there is a link there if you want to click on that and look at it I've been to it it was actually closed down for for the pandemic and you had to wear a mask to go into the visitor center and then walk outside around this crater which to me I just literally just couldn't do it so we never went and visited because that's when we were living nearby but we could go check it out again I could maybe do a video for you guys exploring a few of these areas around Arizona I think that would be really fun here is an article to show you the model 
of how it passed by Earth in a little bit more of a visual here. So before it gets to this, it's going to get through it in a second and you will see what it's talking about. And just a moment, here we go. So here's the object near at uh, doing a near pass basically on the opposite side of the earth to the moon also and uh yeah i just want to show you i'm not worried about it this is more just to get people's brains moving you know people who read magazines still you know what i'm saying they haven't quite moved past the idea or gotten wise to the idea about freaking mainstream media so whatever that's for them they're being caught up at their rate and that's fine. You know, everybody, we have a variety of IQ points on this planet. So we're just respecting all of them the best we can. And uh, let's continue on through the stories. Oh, I have this one open still. The imagery, I wonder actually, let's, I wonder if we just like click here and see what we got today. Is there a story? Oh, we're going to talk about gamma ray bursts. Okay, they're monitoring some gamma ray bursts. That's always fun. What else do we have? Bepi Colombo flyby of Mercury finds electron rain triggers X-ray auroras. Beautiful, very interesting. New tidal disruption event discovered by Chinese astronomers. Interesting, three hours ago. Here's also the mysterious object. I don't know if you saw about this. Washing up on Australian coast. And they're claiming it is space junk now, but they kind of went a little uh, fancy with it. But who, who's space junk is it in, in, in particular? There is more about astronomers discovering and unusual stellar evolution from 21 hours ago. So we're moving into mm, the last couple days and research and so on but just in the last few hours i just wanted to re just wanted to peek just wanted to take a little peek so let's go to space weather live i want to encourage you guys to download this app they have an android and an apple version of this app or if you're a computer person and you're always on your computer just have this up and see if it'll notify you uh or follow their twitter also if you're a twitter person and it'll notify you we have the KP index is now calming down. The aurora has calmed down from yesterday. But the last information here is about the flares and the intensity that happened the last 24 hours. So during that, during that storm, literally actually before that solar radiation storm, we were already receiving aurora borealis from the 16th and the activity from the 16th, which the cameras were all fudging up already and struggling with. So I was, again, I was on my Instagram. I made a reel kind of being like, hey, heads up, the cameras and everything's getting weird, but there's the auroras coming in. So clump, something's already here. But we had a sustained, sustained aurora storm for quite a few hours, actually. And which is pretty, I would say it's not very common for it to last. You can see usually it'll pop up and come back down pretty quickly. But there is much more to this story. And the 16th really was very active. So for this to come in on the 17th, 18th, even the 15th was very active. So that's usually how long it takes, two to three days to get here, to warm us up, to warm our planet up. And for those of you not uh, aware of the aurora legends it's basically allowing the ancestors to speak to you those upper dimensional areas or the the veil or even the heavens the upper heavens to kind of reach down and kind of press closer to our lived experience and so if you're contacting or feeling contacted by your passed on loved ones or you were feeling deep inspiration for the next portion of your life, that's usually what happens during Aurora, which is why it's so important to me to report on. So let's continue on. I Like I mentioned, today is July 18th. It is Leo moon, so your heart, heart chakra, all your blood, your blood pressure, your blood circulation is in concern today. Think about those things. Take more action on those things. I did a video yesterday 
or sorry, the day before to talk about the lion cleanse that I'm doing. I'm back on it today. I had a couple days where I did a little bit of plant matter to help with fiber and to help kind of give me some minerals and some vitality. And I'm back on the lion cleanse today just to keep keep going with that progress and get that cell clearing and that ketosis to keep moving through my body as I'm healing things out of my body that no longer are needed. So here is the first footage, or I would say spaceweather.com is another wonderful resource for the daily space weather updates. If you are new to this and they also have an archive, you can check out, but there's often footage and these graphics are GIFs about the most recent explosion on the sun. So it's really nice to watch. You can also check the current wind speed. This should be around 400 kilometers per, per, kilometers per second. So it's a little bit over. No big deal though. It's not crazy. And overall the solar, solar wind and the solar flares and everything has calmed down since this whole explosion kind of, I want to say maybe released finally all that tension. There is a fly that will not stop landing on me. It is wanting to be involved in this video super, super badly, which is interesting. So Fly Collective, what's up? Love you. Geomagnetic Storm Watch, we're still in the watch because of what happened here. Because of this, we're in the watch. But here is a beautiful, this is from Big Sunspot AR3363, AR lots of three, six, and, and nines in that, <laughs> in that. And you can see here on this graphic on the side here that it is, and this is turning away. Uh, everything on the right-hand side, that's the outer limb here, is turning away from Earth. So this wasn't directly towards Earth at all, but it was so massive that it's, it's entering the solar wind and it's going to be hitting the Earth, and I'll show you the models for that. But one other sunspot, and they had, there's quite a few more sunspots that are active, these very large dark spots, 3372, 3373. There's one over here that's not even named for some reason, which it should be. Um, and then there's a few more. Like all of these have the potential to flare us, and these are more earth facing. This sort of area is more earth facing activity. So we have the potential for many more solar flares to be coming. Please get in your magnesium salt and baking soda, lavender baths. Please hydrate yourself with sea salt and in your water. Go about your healing methods, whatever you need to get through this, and then maybe do some research on some extra. Be open to more advice. I'm going to drink my water right now because I need to keep hydrating as I'm living in the one of the hottest places on earth, literally. So... We've been enduring that while enduring all of this. And I was sitting outside soaking up the energy of this. I was intuitively guided to be outside after the sun was setting to absorb these photons and protons um, for some reason. So the last few days I haven't been in the sun as much and it's because of the heat, but also because it just didn't feel that great. Like after a certain amount of time, just felt too much, didn't feel right. And then during this all last night, I was out until the sun set and it was dark and I was watching the monsoon clouds come in because we've been waiting for the monsoons here in the desert, the summer monsoons, and I watched them finally roll in. So whatever this did, it kicked on the natural cycles that were necessary for uh, nature to be replenished here in the desert, which of course you're rooting for it after all this heat. You're like, all right, time to give everybody a big drink. We're ready to watch. So... This is the models that I was showing you yesterday. I mean, not yesterday. Yeah, I was yesterday all over my Instagram and so on. But here's some more models that I'm going to show you that are available. So these are what the alerts look like on your phone from Space Weather Live, the website, and on Twitter as well. This is what they show up as. Solar Ham is another great resource for as well the tweets and so on. They do a great job. And you can see the Aurora yesterday. This is how intense it was off of the coast of Australia was the biggest. <laughs> this fly is crazy. It's t trying to talk to you guys. Uh, you can probably, you probably heard its little voice a couple times there. But this is such a helpful tool about the impact. And we have 
some now here's some footage okay some footage of this huge explosion this is the big big one it was on the 17th just a few hours before the 18th and Solarham retweeted this photo and <laughs> this this m5 that happened that caused that proton storm here's where it impacted the most thankfully it was mostly in an in unpopulated the most unpopulated area of the planet which is the pacific ocean which spans is basically half of the planet so ironically most of us live on the same half of the planet and then there's just hawaii by itself and papua new guinea as well and of uh, new zealand as well and tasmania and so on but like it we really in a way got lucky alaska also which was earthquaking and we didn't have a major volcanic explosion which was kind of the concern but it seemed like it just earthquaked instead so again solar ham labeling this it's a little easier for the beginners this is the cme this is the sun and then the solar radiation storm began, the S1. You can see that the poles were then very much excited, but definitely this area over by Antarctica and in between Australia and Antarctica was getting a ton, was attracting or getting a ton of that radiation. We, this is one of my favorite models. I repost this one on my Instagram sometimes because it's so pretty and all the colors, but this is the M5 Point seven explosion in a little bit more detail as you can see it kind of ripples up and around but you can also see there was multiple flares you can see these other flashes that happen at the same time that aren't reported along the same time but they're there i can see them these are the other sunspots we were just talking about flashing so it really felt like this was a major pressure release from the sun which is always nice to see you know a little bit of pressure release on Earth, though, what did it show up as? Mm, definitely some temperamental issues. I experienced, again, I got the messages, but oh well. We do what we can. We've moved through it. Good job. Here's some more footage of it. Beautiful, beautiful. It's going to zoom out in a second here so you can see even more and how impactful and large. A little zoomed in footage of that, but none of that sun diving object that came in right beforehand. Of course not. You know, <laughs> of course not. But uh, I have so many resources. I follow a lot of people. So if you're seeing names on here, you're like, oh, I should follow them. Go to my Twitter. It'll be the easiest way. I'm retweeting everything. So you can find the people I follow, follow them. You know, I'm not trying to make you dependent on me at all. I want to just share the love and share my interest. Here's more of the footage, some more people to follow. So here is the model from that before it's been edited a couple times. But you can see that clearly we were in the impact zone. This is us, the little yellow dot. Little yellow dot right here, as well as here and here. So there's three different angles, three different shots. Um, we really, 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 really are going to be getting this wave. Really, really, really big. Okay, this is huge. We rarely ever even get to get the satisfaction of these models showing us something this powerful which is you know exciting for me because i just really want i want clarity i want full disclosure about this because it's happening it's not like it's not happening so to not tell us about it just seems kind of counterproductive it's like to me it just seems silly and it's not for increasing the intelligence of people on earth at all much is my goal we definitely want smarter people smarter and more informed people and practitioners so let's see i'm just going to look at the date on the top here top left and then watching the yellow dot and seeing when that impact looked like it's going to hit and what day so the 20th kind of looks like when things are going to get get important about this where more of the denser solar wind from this is going to travel and come here so get ready for the 20th everybody here's a little model again to show how the radio blackout which means radio waves are having a hard time carrying across the planet which is was more of a concern back in the day <clears throat> excuse me than it is now i'm assuming but that's still what they use to talk about basically the looseness of the atmosphere or the ions in the upper atmosphere they become looser and so they don't carry signals very good and so 
you know, your electronics, maybe your signals on your internet, whatever. I wonder how those Starlinks were doing. <laughs> we were struggling like hell with ours this morning. Finally, it's working. But yeah, just to give you a little more of a show, but really, Hawaii really, really was the main, the main receiver of this, in my opinion, and that Alaskan area which is fantastic. It's a wonderful node on our planet, super important spot. And uh, I didn't hear about any earthquakes or volcanoes from Hawaii yet, so very interesting. I also saw my dog literally uh, with his foot by accident while I had just put my phone down, clicked on this about mounds. So if you live near mounds around, you may want to learn more about mounds and why they were built and how they were built and what they were activated to do really fascinating. Here's that object that washed up on the Australian coast. This was on the west coast of Australia, Greenhead. Here again is evidence of the protons. So this is, this rarely ever moves. This rarely ever moves. And to just watch it just go all the way up like that, big, big deal. This is, I'm so glad I'm retweeting this and saving these images for my camera roll even, because it's just historical. Now I want to talk to you quickly about the El Nino effect that's also happening. We are having the climate shifting. El Nino is kind of popping into relevance again. You're probably going to hear more and more about it, but uh, it's happening. Things are happening. The El Nino effect is on its way. So study more into that if you're interested. More footage, more footage, amazing lightning strikes. My goodness, the lightning coming out of those mon monsoon clouds was something I've never seen before. I was blinded at one point from the light of it and there was no bolt, I'm pretty sure. I was staring right at it and all of a sudden it was just lit up everything in my, all my, my whole retina was, you know, white. I was, had to recover from it basically. And I had a front row seat, so it was incredible, but I want to study more about how the monsoon lightning works because it's, it's its own little unique thing in Medudley, in my opinion. Also, big orca energy coming through multiple times. Yesterday, the orcas were coming through again. They've kind of lost their, their media prominence, but not in my mind. And so, are you an orca and are you a dolphin? Who do you want to be in the ocean? Uh... It's the humpback whales because they're the ones that also police the orcas. But if the if they don't get to your babies first, which is pretty difficult to do, but there is a little bit of drama there. But just look at the sheer power of this, this animal and compared to the size of a dolphin. Okay, very, very powerful, <laughs> incredible, but they can bully these beings. And the Hawaiian people, and I put it on my Instagram we're, uh, see if I can get to you in a bit, but we're going up and down. They went to Haida Gwaii and over by Vancouver Island and then up towards Alaska. And I saw a picture of an actual orca coming up to their very small boats and the people petting the orca on the face. Like it was incredible. I was so moved by that. Casually just reaching down, touching this orca from basically like this crazy, like old fashioned canoe, like two-parted canoe I don't even know what the boats are called because I don't have I don't have that knowledge yet but it was incredible also I found this model that uh, other heliophysicists were commenting under this being like we all where did you find this and it is here I will show you oops I still don't know how to use twitter fantastic this is really good. Can you help us? Okay. Yeah, it's from Lockheed Martin. Fantastic. So this is another resource you guys might want to use. I put the URL so you can see them in these videos. So you can find this little black dot is us in comparison. And so this is kind of showing how the electromagnetic or the magnetics of the sun are rolling past Earth. And unfortunately, it's going super fast. Can I slow it down? Yay. So there's more sunspots on the way and so on. So I'm going to keep watching this model. I don't really know how to read it yet, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to definitely start learning. We have, this is another one of the solar prediction models. I just wanted to show you because this one will move a little slower. And the date's right here up top. 
and I've kind of paused it because this is the 16th. This is me, you know, here's Earth in the green. This is me going, why isn't the footage showing up? I'm trying to look at this wave because I was. And then, of course, we had more begin coming out of the sun. And, oh, no, this isn't even going to show you the updated footage. Isn't that crazy? It's so hard to get the actual updated footage of these models. I notice it's very weird. But there's multiple waves, multiple things coming out. And even the it, the 20th is still the winter looking like. So keep eyes on that. There's no coronal hole. So solar wind should be normal except for those like quick bursts of like on the 20th when it's going to come in. The far side of the sun doesn't seem too concerning. Again, there is more. This is the aurora storm. When these start getting yellow, this starts getting brighter. X-ray radiation. Here's the solar wind model. You can see there was a drastic all of a sudden jump up in the solar wind. Here is the 18th started. And it's been pretty steady since. So we're just in this slightly heightened solar wind experience. And let's move on. Here is my Instagram with some knowledge and so on if you want to follow me there that's where i'm most active hit notifications on there and you won't be sorry very entertaining and for the 24 hour chit chat we have a telegram chat you can see that there's almost 1500 people signed up but i would say regularly there's about 12 people once in a while who are there checking in talking about their their symptoms talking about their dreams you know a lot of people have been struggling to sleep so they've been helping each other trying to figure that out it's amazing to see it's literally so heartwarming i can't even describe to you the feeling i get inside just opening up this telegram chat and being like i'm home you know it feels so good and i'm just i i'm i'm just shoving stuff in there that you guys maybe need but you're ignoring me most of the time and just doing your own thing which i also love i know it's silly but i like to be ignored as well like i don't want to be the center of the attention either i just want to provide what i'm providing and serve and move on and not have that pressure that social pressure either to constantly be there but i just love the company it's so amazing so like i was saying the italian data and the russian data this is the atmospheric charging data so you'd think after everything that happened last night oh my gosh are you kidding me is this really not going to load Hmm, is that, is that really happening? Okay, well, maybe that's what I'm actually looking for and it's gone. We had a slight bit of charge come in, but nothing crazy, nothing crazy, which makes you think that maybe more of the activity we're seeing on here is ground-based tech instead of uh, from the sun. And I've been trying to juggle that for years. And it's a tricky thing because other countries don't want you exposing what they're doing. But it's like, well, I'm kind of here to protect the children. And uh, if you're going to be electrifying your atmosphere and noodling with them, I'm going to say something. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go through this life and just keep my mouth shut about these things. If you see something, you say something. And that's how the lion goes, you know? So with my, uh, my link tree which is on my everything. I put it everywhere. These are the links I'm using. You got to scroll down just a little bit to get there, but then you have it all. And you have so many resources to do this yourself. If you weren't paying attention and watching the URL, URL up here during this video, a lot of this stuff is in here for your easy access. That link can be found, found in the description. It can be found in my Twitter bio, my Instagram bio, my Telegram bio. It's on my website, ascensiondiaries.com. Like I've tried to make this as streamlined and open as I possibly can. It's 11, 11 a.m. here. So I think that's a validation that I'm doing my job out of service and again I'm not trying to privatize or claim I'm good at this or better than you better than anybody I'm just here because I freaking love it I love it with all my heart and I am so fascinated by this it is fulfilling my soul on so many levels and that's you know you just got to find that thing you got to find that thing and this is mine as well as tarot <laughs> which I'm going to be doing later for everybody and I'll do a re I'll do a card for all of us just for fun yeah but I'm just looking at the earthquake so the earth has been really quiet look how quiet the earth is pretty much except for in Brazil which is 
bizarre. California, Sir, Mexico, this is always doing this. So whatever that is, it's not very accurate data, not very helpful. They maybe have to reset it. I don't know. Something's constantly shaking there. It's the, that's why all the earthquakes are not happening because this place is just constantly shaking it out for y'all. So don't live over here. I would say just don't live here. <laughs> My advice, just don't go there. Save yourself some trouble. Okay, so heart math is struggling to show us the Schumann resonance power too. Oh, we're seeing a theme now. We're seeing a theme. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're struggling to get some accurate data here. And this is two days behind. This isn't even loading. This is not at all. The website is pooping out on us. I, had, I hadn't noticed yet. Errors, errors. Okay, that'll happen during big solar explosions. Uh, Earth-based equipment also just starts getting a little weird, getting a little uh, messed up. So here on the 16th was the last biggest blast. Ooh, good thing. Good thing we saw that before. The page just reloaded. And now it's gone. And there wasn't even a little weird object. Did you? I don't know if you caught that on the right of that last blast on the 16th. There was a little information down here, a little bit of picture going on, which don't get crazy about it. If you if you can resist your urge to channel some sort of galactic message about that little thing, ugh, I don't know. Just it's not for me. <laughs> but if you have to tell me, then you have to tell me. So before I reload. Here it is, but that might have been this. That little that little piece I was telling you about would have been that gamma level or the fourth Schumann resonance, which is in the gamma brainwave level. So there you go. You could actually get a little bit galactic on that. I'll be honest. So I spoke too soon. Classic me, but there that's real. That's something that is important. So that little blip was important. And when your brain goes into gamma, you're getting a little bit more galactic in the brain. So but right before the 17th started, you may have been feeling a little bit more contact with your star family, which is a real deal. I believe that. Um, that's what woke me up. So you got to be honest about that. I'm not, I'm not apart from the woo-woo at all, but when you're chasing UFOs in your car, and they're calling you outside of your house from inside your house, you believe, you know what I'm saying? It becomes a part of your daily life, and I assume a lot of you are going to experience that. So amplitudes are really low. Frequencies are pretty normal. The quotient or Q factor, quality factor is pretty, eh, got a little jumpy on the 17th again. A little bit of suspicion there on the... Uh, the fourth Schumann resonance in the gamma brain waves of Earth. So just a little note on that, have to make it. This is the current impact of our solar wind on the Earth. As you can see, it's pretty chill, pretty quiet. <laughs> this little fly. Ooh, who are you, little fly? Tell me your name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. Just wants to be a part of it all, don't we all? Global consciousness dot. Actually, we got a lot into the blue today. A lot of coherency. Congratulations, everybody. We got some coherency, which is also probably why I want to make a video because I'm feeling hashtag coherent, which we hashtag love. Let's look at the lightning map. Okay, so where are we building a ton of energy right now? And lightning being grounding in this cosmic energy, uh, whatever is hanging off of the coast and in the, the coast, the Gulf of Mexico and off of the coast of Florida. Um, a lot of my personal light worker friends, my soul family was just in Florida. When I saw that, I was like, oh, here we go. Something's happening. <laughs> Something's happening over yonder. Can't wait to see the impact of that. And I, we were dreaming about them and the astral. We were all kind of together enjoying ourselves, though. It felt like it wasn't bad. It felt like it was good. Like we were touring, we were enjoying. Things were decently stable. We've got some more lightning over here, but most active again. Mm -hmm. Is this over by Croatia? And north of Croatia? It's kind of hard to tell when it just keeps going. But yeah, it looks like, honestly, it looks like Croatia is actually getting a lot of it. I've been there. I've also gra gridded that area. So shout out Croatia. I've been to Florida. I've, shout I've gone there. Over by Cuba. I've been to Cuba. This is definitely over happening over by Cuba. 
Um, we have some people in the Telegram group chat who are living over there. They're pretty active. They're having a hard time sleeping. Hopefully they see this video and are like, oh, maybe that'll make sense. <laughs> um, here we go. Let's take another look at a little bit a different weather radar. As you can see, Cuba, you, there's weather here, but you're not even seeing as much off of Florida. It's funny how these maps actually don't line up with each other very easily. That That is frustrating. A little bit frustrating. Uh, let's see how things are building. Do ba do ba do ba do. Ooh, lots of activity out here all of a sudden, and then we're getting no data at all. The clouds completely disappeared. <laughs> and we're back. Okay, not accu weather enough. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. So funny, Alexis. You're so funny. Follow me on Instagram for all my memes. I'm about to go on another meme spree. I feel it coming because we need a little bit of a comedic relief. Me personally for my mental health. And uh, all y'all who've decided to stick around because you can handle my meme sprees. You're about to be entertained. Okay. Today is a big day. Or at least into tomorrow this week. Okay, just looking at the accurate here. All right, this is good. This is good. So just want to make a note again. I just did a four and a half hour long diary entry for all the codes of July that I've been getting my personal progress as a human being. If that interests you at all, it's also on this channel. It's the last video I made and overall hit up my hit up my telegram and hang out, get into my link tree, figure it out, sign up to my Patreon which is also in the link tree right here, right here, right here. There's lots of places to look and get signed up so we can join the space weather class that I'm going to be hosting in a next month this time, a month from now. So I'm going to start promoing it, start preparing you. So you, your spouse, your mom, your dad, your cousins, your nephews, your nieces, your kids, your dog, your cat, your birds, and all the other uh, your f house flies, everybody can gather around and we can have a lovely little workshop about it and maybe it'll give you some more insights, some more downloads, some more connection to your soul about all this, the soul, the sun, your solar plexus, your personal empowerment. That's why I do this. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please share it with your intelligent space weather healer friends and subscribe give me the love, get me on my, get on my Patreon, love me up over there. And I promise to pay it forward, pay it back. It's a good investment. I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. And I will see you also on Twitter. Okay. Peace and love guys.